Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Gemstone Legends video. Uh, we've got a boosted chance in the altar right now and I'm going to do the biggest pull I've ever done before. Uh, I picked up some platinum scrolls, a bunch of gold scrolls, and I also have a couple platinum scrolls from the, um, what is it, the quest, the monthly crest, quest, <laughs> the monthly quest reward at the end of the month you get a platinum scroll and also the monthly time rewards. Uh, you also get a platinum scroll. So I've got 66 gold scrolls and five platinum scrolls, which is the biggest pull that I've ever done. And so I'm really hoping I get another legendary from all that. So if you haven't tried Gems and Legends yet, come check it out and play alongside me. It's another really fun and deep strategy RPG like Empires and Puzzles, but with some fun new twists. And a lot of people from Empires and Puzzles have already joined. Not only can you help out the channel by using the download link in the description of this video, but if you enter the code hashtag Spock underscore 2021 hashtag in the global chat, you can get a nice starter bonus including gold, gems, gold scrolls, and a free epic hero Elidor, all valued at about 50 bucks. Once you join, you'll also get access to a set of beginner events where you can earn another epic hero Soliana, a five-star legendary set of equipment, which is what you use to boost the stats and performance of your heroes, and a platinum scroll for another epic or legendary hero in the game. Now, those links and codes are in the description down below. Just be sure to enter that code in the global chat after finishing the tutorial within 24 hours of downloading the game, and I look forward to seeing you all there. Um, we've got a boosted chance at Arlen, who seems really good in the right team. I don't know enough yet to say what his stats look like, but Monaghan is already at a good spot. I think anything over 20 is great. Um, he's an attack leader. Uh, anywhere. And 35% is huge. So, um, yeah, speed is pretty good. And his main special skill deals damage to a single enemy. 260% attack. Deals damage to a single enemy, 15% of targets, max HP. So he's doing a pretty good attack, and then he's also just taking away 15% of their HP. Ignores 20% defense, and then inflicts heal block. So once the target you hit with him is in rough shape, you can say. Um, and then deals 40% more damage if the target is affected by bleeding. So you'll definitely want to have him on a team with someone that um, inflicts the bleeding ailment because 40% more damage is huge and then deals an additional 40% damage to the target is affected by taunt or provoke. That one won't be super helpful. Um, I think you're better off using curse in the event that someone has fired taunt and then provoke. I don't see being super huge. So it's really going to be putting with some, putting him with someone that casts the bleed, ailment um, and then just maxing his attack crit rate and crit damage so he can hit super hard um, so yeah I'd be happy to get him I don't really have I have some pretty good yellows I guess but nothing that's outstanding um, so yeah I guess we'll just go for it I don't I won't bother saying who I'm hoping for because sort of a crapshoot anyways but one thing you can see is that they've improved this chance it used to be times two and now it's times eight so it's actually significantly more likely um these four epic ladies i'm not too crazy about we already saw diana released and uh, she is removing one negative status from allies giving soul replenish and mana breath um i think mana breath is similar to the caster set where it's improving the mana gain, and I think Soul Replenish gives, like, X amount of mana per turn. Um, so yeah, she's she's not bad. Um, I guess we'll take a look at these real quick. Feel free to fast forward if you're not interested in this part. Grants Color Master to one ally, so they can match one more time. Ally with the highest attack for five turns. I oh, know, Color Master, God, I always mix these up, is the color advantage no matter what color tiles you're using. And then also board king. So that's just to one. Resistance is increased by 15% for every 20 mana. Gains 20 mana when she uses her special ability. Gains 50 mana when using her special ability on target with five or more positive statuses. 
So I guess she kind of lets you get similar to Maharold if you don't have him. Um, and if I'm missing something that you think is is true about these heroes, please let me and the other viewers know in the comments down below. Uh, increase the speed of all allies and all game modes by 12%. Grants recovery, which is like healing over turn. To an ally for six turns. Soul replenish. Oh, sorry. I guess she's boring me. <laughs> Gets, grants increased defense and increased resistance to all allies at the start of the wave. Okay, not too crazy about her. Immunity to all allies, to an ally. Oh, that would have been really good. Immunity and recovery to one ally, okay. 25% chance to grant recovery for two turns to all allies every time she's attacked with critical damage. And that's where this game is just different than what I'm used to, so it's hard to know which of these things are good in a, in a totally different ecosystem. Increases defense of all allies in guild-related battles. Grants taunt to an ally with the highest defense for four turns. Grants reflect. So I kind of like these, uh, where if you have one of those heroes like Vigo or Sophia that does extra damage based on, or does their damage based on defense, and they increase their defense... Um, now you can make them a taunt hero, basically, and their defense is so high that they can, they can handle it, and then they also get a little bit of reflect, so attacking them is, um, is a risk. Um, oh, interesting, grants soul link for three turns to herself and an ally, if that ally has less then 30% HP when she uses her special ability. So she's kind of like, uh, Nefri is her name, who can make teams really hard to kill. So this could be an interesting hero paired with a really high defense hero that can just make that team really tough to kill. All right, so let's get into it. We'll do the golds first and then the platinums. And if we get another legendary, we'll get an, an, a sixth platinum pull here. So we do have the Hero of Kronar event coming up. I might do some more pulls for that as well, but um, I just don't want to wait. I kind of want to go while I have the boosted chance here. So here we go. A lot of three stars as expected with the gold scrolls. All right, first little bit of something here, epic. Finbor, not new to me, we'll take a quick look. Deals damage to all enemies based on attack, removes one positive status from all enemies. Deals 5% more damage for each positive status affecting an enemy. 30% more damage to enemies above 50% HP. So he's a good starter and sort of a uh, dispeller or status remover. Increases the attack of all allies in the arena by 25%. I've got definitely every three star by now, and I think most four stars. There are still some that I'm missing at this point. Quite a streak of three stars here. Hopefully we have better luck with the Platinums. All right, something else. Epic. Gera. I've got a bunch of her already. She's pretty cool, though. Of this family, I think she's probably the second best with um, Gaffa Death being the best, the yellow one. Grants increased defense to all allies for four turns. Grants protective shield on 20% of targets max HP to all allies for four turns. So the thing that I'm... Oh, this is to all allies, yeah. Never mind. Um, and then I think she has ability to cast this on herself. No. Restores 15% HP at the start of her turn, immune to heal block. So really helps with the survivability of your team. And she's an HP leader everywhere. Really good mana gain. 
only uh, four gemstones on her turn to get her charged. I think I've only got a legendary from gold scrolls. Maybe once, unless I'm misremembering. And it was one that I purchased from the market. Alright, something else. Epic Boyka. I think she's one of the new ones. Yep, she's the blue one. Um, so interesting. We already looked at her, so I won't read through it again. But we're seeing a little bit of the boosted chance there. Would have rather gotten the yellow one. Something else. Legendary. Epic. Nika is the purple one. Grants immunity and recovery to an ally. Well, the boosted chances is uh, working for sure. Alright, 14 more of these and then we'll jump to the platinums. Hopefully we can do six platinums if I pull one legendary in there. All right, something else. Yes. Aurora, another one. <laughs> oh, God. Um, this was my first legendary hero. She's a very good hero, so this might be... I'm laughing now because duplicates are not the most fun, but I think in um, in the Guild Wars, it could be good to have two. I don't know what the Guild Wars are going to look like yet, but she's a great hero, and uh, it's not like I have five of them. So it grants protective shield based on 25% of targets max HP to all allies for four turns. Grants increased attack to all allies for four turns. If below 40% HP, adds de uh, increased defense to her special ability. If below 20% HP, adds fortify to her special ability. So she's just really helpful for keeping your team alive and also boosting your attack at the same time, which is a really nice combination. You've got the added survivability and you're more dangerous at the same time. So you're not just purely defensive. You're, you're uh, on the attack as well. And a resistance leader in all game modes. So a good pickup still. Something else. Aurelia. And now I can say I've gotten another legendary off gold scrolls. Deals damage to a single enemy based on attack, 100% chance to inflict decreased attack on a single enemy for three turns, and decreased speed. So that's actually pretty good. Um, I'm noticing more in this game that you need to have a, a wide roster of different hero types, and you might not take them all to six stars. But... Oh, sorry. Um, but they're good to have at like five stars maybe. So for the raid boss, decreased attack and decreased speed can be really helpful. Uh, for a yellow heavy team, which I'm seeing a lot of in the leaderboard these days. Again, great mana gain. That means she needs four gemstones on her turn. Gains increased attack for one turn at the start of her turn. Removes all negative statuses if below 30% at the 30% HP at the start of her turn. So she increases her own attack before dealing damage, which is pretty cool. All right. So, all in all, not too bad for, um, oh, I misspoke about the, I was going to say not too bad for Gold Scrolls, and then I was thinking I misspoke that if I pulled a Legendary, I could do another Platinum Scroll. If I pull a Legendary that I've never pulled before, then I can do another Platinum Scroll because I've already claimed the rewards for Aurora since I've already pulled her. So, we'll jump to the Platinum Scrolls now, really hope we can get another Legendary, but, um... We're doing pretty good that we've gotten one already. All right. Epic Tala. I think she's new to me. Deals damage to all enemies based on attack. 100% chance to inflict decreased attack on all enemies for two turns. 100% chance to inflict bleed on all enemies for two turns. So that could be a good combination with Arlen. Got another bleed hero. 
Resistance is increased by 7%, so that's 35% total if everyone's alive and immune to silence. All right. Epic Zane. I've got another Zane already, but Zane is one of those heroes that a lot of people like because he's a speed leader. Um, so he's popular on a lot of um, raid boss teams because of that. So he gains increased critical chance and increased critical damage first, and then deals damage based on attack. So that order is really key. Deals 35% more damage to targets with no positive statuses. Recovers 50% HP when he kills an enemy. So not super great for the raid boss. Um, but a great hero, actually. Alright, three more. Can we get lucky? Epic. Urin. <laughs> I love how the yellow hero is named Urin. 100% chance to inflict heal block on all enemies for three turns. 100% chance to inflict vulnerability. So vulnerability means that they take uh, increased damage from special skills. Removes one positive status from an enemy whenever she deals damage with gemstones. Okay. Come on. Epic. Violentina, also not new to me at this point. Deals damage to a single enemy based on attack. Come on. Recovers HP equal to 30% of damage dealt. Once per battle, she can resurrect with 30% HP. So that's, I think, the key with her is I've fought her a number of times before, and it can be really annoying that you kill her, and then she just pops back up again with 30% HP. Uh, granted, it only happens once. She's also a speed leader everywhere. Speed is a really important ability at this point. And good speed and good mana gain as well. Last one. Another epic. Man, I can't believe that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright, well that's what we got. Unfortunately it was a duplicate, but still another legendary is good. I think there will be more events coming to the game that will start to value a more complete roster. Um... So it will be nice to have that other Aurora when that happens. So I wish you luck in your polls. Um, hopefully the boosted chance worked in your favor and you were able to pick some heroes up that were new to you or ones that you were um, interested in. Uh, if you're interested in checking out Gemstone Legends, just like I mentioned earlier in the video, there is information in the description of this video. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Check it out. I think you'll like it as well. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.